like to call the study at Nazarene District Library to order. May you please take a roll call. Hey, Karen? Here. Carolyn? Here. Dennis? Here. Diane? Here. Patty? Here. Linda? Here. Tim? Here. Right. So it's going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 I have a question. Um, I noticed in the minutes um, we took a, I believe it was a roll call for chapter one. And I answered yes, but I wanted to answer no. Is there anything that you can mention? Like I voted yes and I don't vote yes for chapter one since we haven't really so are you saying you voted no? No, I'm saying I voted yes. Okay. I would have preferred to vote no is what I should have done. Is there some way we could just make a note of that? Well, it, what we can do is, I mean, you can't really, you know, retroactively change what you said, but we can put in tonight's minutes mm -hmm. that you wish you had voted no. Okay. So we can, we can put So that. when do I have to catch, I should have caught it before the next item, right? Is that how that goes? Um, yeah, okay. yeah, if you wanted to change something, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right, and we have a vote on that then. Um, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Betty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay. Uh, do we have any requests for public comment? Um, at this point, I'd like to mention that I uh, probably will have to leave the meeting a little bit early tonight. So I was wondering if someone who would mind making a motion to take the agenda in a slightly different order, and that is to move up the adoption of the ordinance levy to right now and then resume the rest of the agenda where we left off. I motion. Okay. I'd like to move. I wanted to move to table the ordinance. Well, okay, there, there's already a motion on the floor. I know, well, I was prepared to do it at the end okay. of the meeting, so now you uh, throw it in. Okay, all right, let's first vote on where we're going, um, just moving it up, mm -hmm. and then you can, if you wish, make a motion to table it. So we have a motion to move it up on the agenda right now. Right? A mm -hmm. second? Diane was the second. Okay. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. So we are now addressing what would be number 10 on our agenda, new business, adapting ordinance 18-05, an ordinance loving and assessing taxes of the Niles Main District Library. Uh, so I do have a motion regarding this ordinance. I'd like to move to table the ordinance 1805 adoption to provide some specific information for reconsideration. Second. May I please ask you why? Like I said, I have information that I'd like to provide for you to reconsider. When we were discussing the levy, we were driven in a direction and we don't always get to bring up questions or, or bring information, so now I'm ready to do that. Okay. Would you like okay. a copy? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so the reason I'm Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have to have a motion. Uh, oh, okay. We have to vote on the motion to table or not. Uh, oh, what well, do you think? No. Have a discussion first and then vote? Uh, no, actually, there's. Isn't, yeah. isn't this part of the discussion? Well, there's a motion to table. The only thing that's been oh. on, the only thing that's on the floor right now is a motion to table. Okay. And actually, motions to table aren't really subject to debate, so we need to have a debate on whether to table or not, and then someone may choose to make a motion to pass it or not. So. Um, motion to table, that is to defer and not to vote on it tonight at all, uh, is what's on uh, we're looking at right now. So would you call the roll on that? Karen? Uh, no to tabling it. 
Carolyn. Yes. Dennis. Uh, yes. Diane. No. Patty. No. Linda. No. Ten. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. So um, the vote to table has failed. Um, now I'm asking if there's any other motions with respect to the levy this evening. Is there a motion to adapt Ordinance 18-05, an ordinance levying and assessing taxes? No, I would like to provide what? some information. All right, wait, no. I'm asking, is, does anyone want to make a motion regarding that? If there's a motion on the table, then we can address it. My motion is to address specific okay. information for you to consider reconsidering your vote. I, I have information and I want to discuss it. Well, right. it, it my question. We just voted on the motion to take okay. over that. My question is in order to discuss, you said if somebody, if I misunderstood you, please let me know. Uh -huh. If somebody motions to table it, then we don't discuss it. Or well, am I wrong with no, the assumption? The uh, motion to table is not a debatable motion, but we've, we've discussed it, we've voted on that. Now I'm asking if there is a motion to adopt the ordinance, and if there is such a motion, then we can discuss the ordinance. I and whether or not we table it. Uh, well, I mean, that would involve someone else making additional, another oh, motion okay. to table. I just or, want to know, okay. you know, we were given this, and rather than table Well, actually, this, I didn't get this. I don't know okay. what you're talking about. Do you have an extra copy for that? Actually, they were going down and yeah. they stopped. Okay. I'm going to do that. I want to pass one back. All right. So, okay. Tim made a motion to adapt the levy. Am I correct? Yeah, I did. Okay. Do I have a second to Tim's motion? Okay. I'll second. Patty. Just All so right. we can discuss it. All right. So, um, we can discuss the levy at this time. Uh, we discussed it last time, of course, but we can discuss it again tonight. And... Um, can I ask a question before we go any further? Okay, what is... What you is mentioned that tabling is not debatable. Mm -hmm. So what was what was the vote for? To buy us to table, why did you have to take a vote? To, on your motion to table. You asked to table it, you moved to table it, and the vote was on whether to table it or not. Which means that we wouldn't discuss it any further. It would so just get taken off the table altogether. But I believe you could table for different reasons. Well, you can table for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Mine was to discuss further information before you adopt it. But, but you can you can bring up that very same subject right now. I mean, if you want to bring it up now, you can bring it up. Without a table. Right. Uh huh. So, you know, if there's something you want to say now, you can you can say it now. So the question is, you just approved his motion was to adopt it. Right. I'm asking to reconsider this information. With the discussion, you can do that. With the discussion, with the other one, you can't have a discussion. So, it, all right. I just want to make sure we can at least get this out. All right. I, I went through um, the 2018-19 budget year end, and um, there are some items that you have in the levy that I don't feel are appropriate. I don't understand why supplementary grants in the amount of $74,000 are included in the levy. And then we turn around and we ask the taxpayers to give us $74,000 out of the real estate taxes when you're already getting $74,000 from the state. Do that. Well, it's, yeah, it's in the budget. It's in, it's in the, the budget, budget, but not the levy. levy. No, it's in, I saw it in the, in the levy on the bottom. I don't believe that's true. Well, the amount you're levying is the total budget. Right. So if take if you if you look at if you look at ordinance eighteen oh four. Okay. And the budget, what's the difference? You'll find that the difference between that and the appropriation in the levy document, eighteen oh five, is different by the amount attributable to the supplementary grants. I'm not discussing appropriation, I'm discussing the budget amount. The budget appropriations are in the same Appropriation budget. is double the budget. I'm not talking about that amount. I'm talking about, let's pull out the budget and let's right. pull okay, out the budget. Okay, I've got that right here. And what I'm, I'm going have? to address it. I have the budget. Now, this, this is the tentative budget, but I think and this which is budget pretty do much you the have? For this year. For this well, year. Which, this it's is an ordinance. The one that we passed on June 20th, and what's the ordinance 2018. Number? Thank you. 
so this is the budget that we passed just a few months ago. And in the budget... And it's 1804, you said? You said? easy to read. I show the grand total of the amount of our budget of seven million three hundred and two dollars and a hundred three hundred and two thousand one hundred and twenty dollars. And we might have modified that slightly after the ten is one. Did we Greg or is that pretty much the same? There were a few so I'm not sure but I have the one you have so if you can confirm let's see. Uh, yeah. Is there a page missing? There's a page missing of the one. Yes, uh, the third page is missing. So the grand total is not seven million three hundred two. The grand total, I think, is. Now, I'm looking at the tentative one right here, but I think this is the same. Seven million three hundred two thousand. But if you'll notice on the levy. Should we make other copies? Just, just. No, just All right. So Carolyn. Again, the, the budget was seven million three hundred two thousand, mm -hmm. but the levy isn't that much. How much is the it? The levy is only six million eight hundred fifty-nine thousand dollars. So the levy oh. does not raise all the money that we need. I know. It raises so the, the additional money that we need from so supplemental grants. So what's the grants. difference? And we could cut to the chase when we look at my figures. I haven't figured the difference out. I could do that though, because considering. Um, all these items, it's almost a million dollars. So did we, all right, here's another thing. I know we're, all right, so supplementary grant, grants, you claim are not in the levy. Um, no, because. They are not in the levy. So if you look okay. at our levy, you see, you know, all the funds here. Okay, here's what I need. To, I, need to, I need to know that each item I'm going to bring up is not in the levy, okay? So $74,355 is not in the levy, but it's in the budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the diversity training for Harvard Institute, I know um, Susan's not interested in doing that. That was 5000 There was a line item called miscellaneous, which I didn't feel was appropriate to ask for tax dollars because we couldn't justify it. The other thing is the Milwaukee TIF that we're hoping to <coughs> receive in a year is $195,000. I would think we can afford to deduct that from the levy, knowing that the village plans to give us that money. So that was another one. And then HRA for 60500 I didn't understand why that would be part of the levy. And I don't even understand why it's part of the budget. Because that's not our money giving it to the employees. It's the employees giving us money. And we, in turn, utilize it for their health benefits. You're confusing uh, flexible spending, or FSA, mm -hmm. with health reimbursement accounts, which are HRAs. So health the, reimbursement the, accounts? Allow me, please. Um, we have a high deductible plan. Uh, the deductible is $2,500. Uh -huh. And what the HRA does is it, uh, is it funds $1,650 or $3,300 to employees uh, who, depending on if they are single or if they have family coverage, in order to defray the cost of the uh, deductible. So, who who funds that they're? So the to? way that it works is that the employees uh, are responsible for the first five hundred dollars, and then the five hundred and first dollar to dollar two thousand one hundred and fifty is funded by the library to help the employees manage the plan as if it's a $500 deductible plan. What, what we're able to reap in return is a greater than what we spend on the HRA savings related to our insurance costs. So, for example, if we spend, let's say, $50,000 on health reimbursement accounts, paying that from the library to the employees, maybe we save $100,000 in actual insurance costs, uh, which would be our current plan compared to a $500 deductible plan. 
Okay, so which we've discussed many times. So my question to you is um, the $3,300 that is paid on behalf of the employee is coming from whom? From the labor. So the HRA is the amount that we agreed to give them. So it's, this is not their flexible. That's so correct. Right. Okay, thank you. And you know, Linda, I'm sorry this frustrates okay. you, but you have to ask us. questions. Okay. And it's not the library that gets it, it's the tax payer, right? It's a tax payer, isn't it? Well, taxpayers don't write checks to employees. Absolutely. You know, it goes into the general fund, and then the general yeah. fund actually writes a check. Absolutely. The library's general fund actually yeah. writes a check Absolutely. to the employees. Understood. Okay, and then my next segment you know is trying to get it. I looked at the um, year end consolidated income statement and I went through the variances and there's $195,416 of those in last year's budget. So I thought that would be an amount we could deduct from this year's budget because we certainly don't need to um, just take that money and have it flow right into the next year's budget. And that's never been brought up in the past. Carolyn, we've already discussed the budget board. Um, You're missing the point. There's a balance in the budget of $195,416. And when we discussed the budget, Greg Critz and um, Karen Diamond indicated they have no idea what the status of the budget will be at the end of the year because we're not there yet. So guess what? We're there now. So now we have a variance, a positive of $195,416. It's left in last year's budget. I think it would be logical to deduct that from this year's budget. Why? We discussed the budget. We, the budget's done. We did vote at the last meeting to keep the levy the same as last year. No, and last, vote. Pardon? What was the vote? Because it mentions the consensus versus natural vote total. Um, I believe didn't everybody vote for it. Mm -hmm. um, well, what happens is we become derailed. Uh, determination of the levy? Uh, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Yeah. You don't appreciate it a lot of questions when we're discussing certain issues, so they're going to come up right. whether uh, you do or don't. Actually, do you think that we uh, entertain many questions? Well, you kind of you bypass some of the questions. There are so many people talking that you just get, end up being derailed and you go on to something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, back to right. the fact that there's $195,000 left in last year's budget. I think it's only fair to deduct it from this year's budget. Why would we want to, what are we doing with it? Just adding it to this year's budget? It's just going to be there. Think of it, it's money laying out there. So that's just another point. And then I had a question about Friends of the Library. They gave us $25,000 last year. I'm not sure what happened to that money. Well, we took the money from their account. Whatever yeah, happened to that? We did. You took the money, you put it in, you put it under some kind of miscellaneous fund. Did you give it back? No. You're talking about the book sale money, the mm -hmm. revenue from the book sale? That, right. That's all, I mean, that's all accounted for. So my point is, where is that? Because it shouldn't it's be It's in the revenues. So uh, it's not It was part. accounted for in all of the calculations. Everything here was so calculated based on... So did we not spend any money. of that money? We don't budget against that particular line. It's part of the revenue of the library. It goes into the general fund. The book sale funds go into the general fund. Now... Okay, what I'm trying to say is, we have money coming into the library that we seem to just not account for, but yet we, we don't have a problem going think, to the taxpayers yeah, asking I, I for money. Yeah, I think we do account for our money. I think we well, do if account you, for if you receive $25,000, i am sure you can afford to take $25,000 back from your upcoming budget. Well, Moving on. We have already okay. discussed the budget. The budget is it's done. not the point. The budget, the budget wasn't done. You keep coming up the budget. The budget is done, Carolyn. No. We can't discuss it anymore. Well, because none of you know how to It doesn't predict. matter what none of us knows. It is not on the agenda to discuss the budget. It's we part of the levy it. decrease. No. You have an, no. No. You the keep saying budget. Is the budget is done. No. Last June, year's budget. In June, we resolved the budget. Okay, okay I'm not to trying to unresolve the budget. We resolved the budget. We are now moving on. Okay, what I'm trying to say is we're talking about the levy. And the levy's at, I think you said, Seven million. million? No. 
No, that's that's the budget amount. Okay, well, all I'm saying is if we have $195,000 hanging out of last year's budget, why don't we cut the levy by that amount? Okay, we did talk about that last time. About and cutting the levy? No, we discussed the amount of the levy last time. But we didn't know and this figure. The consensus was is that we leave the levy at the same amount. Now, I have the but levy there was last no discussion. year. discussion. Carolyn, let me finish my sentence, please. The levy that we passed last year was for exactly $6,859,562. I have the 2017-07 ordinance in front of me. The one that we have in front of us tonight is again for $6,859,562. It's the same amount. Okay. And that was what the census was last time we met. The majority of the board, board members stated that they did wish to keep the levy the same. And that's what we've done. There's no increase and no decrease. The levy is the same this year. Okay, that's wonderful. But my point is, you didn't bring any of this information to any of us to consider even being able to decrease the levy. That's my point. And that's the only reason I'm bringing this up. And you know, as president, you are in charge of the meeting, but you should Pay attention to what's happening throughout the meeting and not constantly just move ahead. Well, I, am I also attention. noted in I the uh, special attention. reserves for the building and special reserves for equipment, we ended with money in those accounts as well. So are we deducting that? that you, don't, you don't levy for that. It's no, but it's an amount of money. But my point well, is, we you're increasing. Be done right. I'm, I'm recognizing Patty right, right now. Who well, I'm still right? talking, so Patty's going to have no, to wait. No, you're going to have to wait a little bit. Because we have ten minutes to speak, according to Robert's I think it's Patty's to Let her finish. When she's things. done, I will say something. So my point is, since we don't really care about the budget, we don't care about the figures, if there's money left in these accounts, we don't even consider them when we talk about how much money we want for next year. All I'm saying is you should take the time to review them, analyze them, and we wouldn't be asking the taxpayers for the same amount of money. We could have decreased it by at least 100000 if not more. That's my point. Can I make a ready? Um, please? I think you were next. At the last month's meeting, we were all asked if it was yay, explain why, if it was nay, explain why, or if you want it flat. If no, you want that's it, not yes, what you it said. was. You want to go back to the minutes? I, I remember it. No. We can, you can play it back. Karen's very, very good at making a motion. Your yeah, option I is either it increasing it or decreasing. Or her question, either increasing it or decreasing it. Because I was asking or questions. Or flat. She meant, yeah. offered all And three. she just, she didn't allow Carolyn, questions. Carolyn, look. Patty has the floor now. Stop. I apologize. Her. And I'm sorry, but I could ask every other person here, do you remember her asking your, if you say yay, explain why. If you say nay, explain why. I remember that. And if you want to check back in the minutes, we can possibly do that. I already did. I already did. Well, and you didn't consider that at the time. Hmm? Agree with what? No, you said it. When I ask you a question, she cuts me off. You, you, we agreed to continue the day. Those were my options. All right, um, I am recognizing Linda now, who's had her hand up. I just want to say um, just a couple things. I, th I appreciate you bringing these figures in to let us look at them. Um, even knowing the 195000 all I can say is a couple things. Thank you to the staff for not feeling like you have to spend every single dime to meet the budget and being due diligent on your spending. And even knowing that number, I still would vote to keep it flat because then that's money we can put into our special accounts for any other things that come up building or surprising I would rather for a hundred ninety five thousand which would maybe be one dollar to every household I think if you went and talked to your neighbors they'd rather keep that dollar into a 
the libraries fund to ensure it that we have money for anything that possibly comes up in the future. That's all I have to say. Thank you. All right. Any other comments or questions? Yeah. Yes, um, I'd like to say I appreciate Carolyn bringing this information up to us, uh, and I believe that I would like her to um, address this the next time we have a budget discussion so that it can be properly placed in the proper location. I don't think we had the information at the time we were talking about the budget. We so. did not. And, and so I asked that's, more. That's, I know, well, that's why I'm saying I appreciate you bringing it to us. This is the result of the ballpark. I am still talking. Thank you. So I appreciate you bringing it to us uh, at this time. Um, I don't feel it's um, I would consider it for our letter discussion, but I do want to consider it for our next budget discussion. So, Carolyn, if you could uh, bring this up at the next budget discussion, that would be great. Okay. Any other questions or comments about the motion? Can I just end this floor? conversation with one statement? All right. What's your statement? The information I presented to you is one million fifty-three thousand dollars worth of decreases. It's not just one hundred thousand dollars. And yes. Dennis is correct, none of this information was available during our budget process because Susan doesn't keep records and oh, now that's really not true. the business now, just, I, I, that's exactly really what she said. Defamatory, and according actually. to you, oh, please, I'm not going and, to listen to and that. our business manager, we don't know where we stand until the very last day of the budget. Well, so none of we don't know exactly available. how much we've spent until the year. But you know what? Other other entities do know. No, they don't. They it's plan. impossible. They no, they plan. That's part of the budget discussion. All right. Yes. yes. I, I just want to point out that we do review numbers like this when we're planning the next year's budget. So we did not have these numbers available to look at it for this year, but we estimated what we thought it was going to be when we were coming up with the numbers and then next year when we're doing the next budget we will be looking at these and we'll see how we budgeted a little too much that year and, and we'll pull it back or or sometimes it goes the other direction so, so we do calculate these numbers we, we do not have a budget review process at all so there's no way you could ascertain anything all right. okay any other comments all right Fine. Um, the motion on the table is to pass the lobby as outlined in the ordinance, which is um, before us. So uh, may I have a roll call, Jane? Yes. Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Susan? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Can we vote no on the levy? Yeah. Yes, you can. You, you just voted yes. You just I'll vote, vote no. I changed my vote to no. Thank okay. you. Okay, fine. Fine. It, fine. It will help if you understand what you're voting for. Okay, okay. that's fine. All right. Uh, I think uh, Carolyn has yeah. changed her vote in time to um, be reflected in the minutes of vote. All right, fine. Let's move on to the uh, next matter. The next item on the agenda is the treasurer's report. Yeah? Uh, I'm so much done with the Yes, actually, at this time, um, I'm going to um, have to depart, um, and I am turning the meeting over to our very capable and experienced uh, vice president to run um, the balance of the meeting, and uh, I'm sure she will do an excellent job. Uh, please don't give her a hard time. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, this is what you have to Test your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, the treasurer's report, it is, uh, again, very, very minimal because um, everything's pretty much under budget uh, or within budget. Uh, so I apologize for the boring nature of it, but, you know, boring uh, financial reports are probably good. Um, you know, unless anybody's got any, you know, real uh, items to note, uh, page nine revenues are, uh, we discussed that before, uh, the items that are greater than we anticipated. Salaries are right on budget, so that's great. Page 10, uh, materials are higher, but we discussed that again. Um, Subscription-based cost, uh, operating expenses are on budget. Page 11, general and admin is slightly under budget. We discussed vehicle operations before. And uh, pages 12 and 13, I have nothing of, uh, to note. Everything's um, as it should be. Workers' cap was a one-time payment. 
to approve the payment of the bills for operating expenses of $206,110.75, payroll expenses of $283,623.61, special reserve expense of $49,000, for a total monthly expense of $538,734.36. Any discussion? Okay, Diana, please take a walk. Yes. Carolyn? Yeah. Dennis? Yep. Yeah. Diana? <coughs> Daddy? Yes. Yeah. Linda? Yes. Ten. Yes. All right, next item on the agenda is the director's report. Okay. Susan, please. I don't have a lot for you. I think, as you can see, the written report is fairly long. Mm -hmm. We are very, very active, but I don't want to just repeat all of that. So um, I did just thought I would mention that I attended, I'm on the Arts and Culture Council, and so I went to that meeting on Monday, and um, it was kind of fun because each of the partners checks in at the Arts and Culture Council meeting, and so um, as each one went along, they, they would say, like for example, the uh, Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce mentioned that they have their monthly meetings now at the Niles Library, and then the next person went and she said, uh, that the Art Guild is now meeting at the Niles Library, and then the next person said something, I don't remember what hers was, but it also was at the Niles Library, and people started to sort of laugh because there was such a, a clear theme going on. And um, so I was just really pleased because that's what I have been wanting for so long, is to for the community to understand what a resource the library is and that you know and part of the whole purpose of the renovation was to provide meeting spaces for the community members and so i was very happy that um, clearly we are, are beginning to really be on people's uh radars and i did come by that uh chamber breakfast that susie wolf had set up she is on the board of the chamber and um they have it on the third tuesday of the month and when i came by it was buzzing there were over 30 people there and much larger than some of the after or hours things that they get. Seven thirty in the morning. Seven thirty. So really something. So I'm very happy about that. And then the other thing I was going to mention is setting up a community engagement team and as part of our strategic plan um, to be working a strong focus on community engagement and we just have so much going on in that area now, which you saw in the director's report, that I'm actually needing to kind of get everybody in the same room to just make sure we're not stepping on each other's toes or duplicating effort or anything like that. So I think uh, I'm kind of excited about that too. And uh, unless you have any questions for me, that's kind of all I have. I had a couple of questions, I, I guess they're for you. It's regarding tech services process changes. I was reading about, um, looks like there was some sort of meeting where there was a major review of um, your um, current the way you, it says here, orders, processes, catalogs, and withdraw all of the library's books. I'm just trying to figure out, um, I guess, tech services definitely has a different meaning than I'm familiar with. Um, so that's the department that processes your orders? Yes, I wrote that little paragraph above that part, just to remind you guys that it is the department that orders, processes, catalogs, and withdraws all of the library's books, DVDs, video games, everything. So processes, I don't know what that term Processing is, is uh, if it needs a sticker on it, if it needs the barcode on it, it oh, needs to be okay. stamped here. There are processing okay. clerks that handle those things. Okay, and then I guess I was confusing that with on September 11th, um, there was, um, let's see, it says, TS work with Cindy in the boardroom mapping out tech processes. So um, are you coming up with new ways to process books or orders? Are you you have um, some implement implementation changes in mind? Yes. Yeah. They they um they, you can see the thing on the background with the brown paper and post-its. Yeah, that was uh, where each member of the team was saying, here is the piece of this that I handle. 
and then they uh, had Greg and I come in and they explained all of it to us. The acquisitions piece of it, the purchasing of materials is uh, the most complicated part of it and that ended up taking almost all of their time because there are many steps, many different kinds of materials that they purchase and right. from different vendors and some of them are standing orders and some of them are prepays and pre-approvals. Well, what do you use for purchasing now? Is it a computerized process? Polaris is what, it's what everything is purchasing? tracked through. Yeah, the, our integrated library system is keeping track of the expenses that are made, but we also have electronic data exchange with our main vendors of Ingram and uh, they're working now on Midwest Tate. So that's all done electronically and feeds directly into our integrated library system. So, but if, if somebody in, in the library wanted to purchase whatever they needed, is that part of a, yeah. a computerized well, the, system? The, for the, for the, from the materials budget only. That's just that. It's not the financial software, it's just keeping track of the materials budget. Oh, so it's not a financial package, it's just... No, that's, oh, separate. that's something that Greg has in the business office. Oh, so you have two different segments. Well, the integrated library system is the catalog and the patron database. That's the thing that we just migrated back in April. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, every library has something like that. But your purchasing is done in different phases, it's not one system? Right. Yeah, there, there I didn't realize way that. To do that. Yeah, technical services it, uh, always handles a library's purchasing. Some libraries have outsourced a lot of that, but we have we generally do all of ours in house for the most part. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, okay, then I had another question. Uh, the catalogers went to a Laconi cataloging mm -hmm. unconference. Yep. I don't know what that means, but anyway, um, is um, were they, um, oh, here's what I wanted to ask. So it says something, decisions, and it says connection client and mark edit. Are those software programs? Honestly, I don't know what it means. Oh, the work okay. of the catalogers is mysterious to me. Oh, it's very detail-oriented, and I they have all different, well, actually, Victoria's <laughs> here, so she can, yeah, she can explain. Oh, so please. Go. Yeah. The connection is the way we get into OCLC, which is the World uh, CAT database. Mm -hmm. So bringing records down. So some there's three different levels of um, putting materials together. So there's classification, there's um, copy cataloging, and then there's original cataloging. So if something exists in OCLC, then we can import that record and use it. If it's not there, then we have to create something originally. And Mark Edit is a tool that can be used for different things for importing macros. It's all it's all tools to um, help the cataloging process be more okay. speedy. Like a software. Right? Yes. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, I just needed to understand that. All right. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. you had a question, uh, Yes, sir. Uh, there's some mention in to help me understand that, that the staffing changes. Which part of it? Plus, well, there's four part time positions, associates, yeah. two positions that can close that. Sounds like there's quite a bit of work, and as a result of quite a bit of work, they're looking to fill those part time positions. Well, it's right. I mean, they, that is the department that staffs the circulation desks, and then they're working behind the scenes to. Uh, and up all the deliveries right. and so, yeah. yeah, that's the switchboard is also that's the passports and so we ran very very lean for a long time to kind of see if we could do it and what we found happening is that we didn't have enough bodies so that people were volunteering to take a slot so that we wouldn't have the front desk unstaffed basically and so their their hours were starting to creep up into the territory where we would have to start giving them IMRF giving them a pension. We don't want to be adding people to our IMRF, so we're at the point now where we're just going to have to bite the bullet and go ahead and hire. So we, these are positions that they had before. These are not new positions. We just were trying not to have to fill them, and we have concluded that we're just going to have to. So does that make sense? Yeah, I, I understand the, the dilemma. I just, you know, uh, I guess uh, my my thought process again is is always on the uh, the lean side, and uh, 
you know, just as I budget at home. And, and, and it's just an analogy to the video. I'm not trying to force my lifestyle on anybody. Uh, but, uh, you know, if we didn't have, you know, as many activities, we wouldn't need to have additional people. Well, that is true. But, uh, I mean, if we didn't have passports, then we wouldn't need people that are doing that. But that's actually making the library money. But, you know, it, it, but for them to get into the IMRF territory, that would really cost us money. So this is actually saving us money. Yeah, well, so, so the passport services, kudos, you, you've hit your target of a thousand or so, that's great. But, you know, the, the passport, the revenue generation from that should, if you're looking to hire on part-time people because you're, you're pulling away from other needs of, of the library, then I, that, that uh, in my opinion, is, is something that if it's not generating enough revenue, uh, it's, it's, well. But, but I mean, it, I, I mean, I take your point. It's just that you know I, that was just one example of the yeah. kind of thing that they do. They yeah. also, you know, they're helping people find their holds. They're, that's that is a very very patron centered department. They yeah. are they are yeah. the department that faces the public the most. Yeah. So, so the holes are, are on that that's, shelf. That's them, and they're you know pulling they're pulling yes. them. They're shelving the books. They're doing all of that. Okay, because so. I find my holes all the time when I come in. Right, but somebody has put it there for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, and, and that's, a, that's yeah. a function that's been going on for yeah. years. Right, absolutely. Not just this year. Right. I, I'm not increasing the staff from what it's been previously. This is okay. Just well, I have a hard time because when I see four ads, to me it looks like it's you're adding. But I know you're fl there's fluctuation. That's why I was asking if the, the, for some explanation. And, 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 and I, I don't know what your your staffing is, you know, on a regular basis. It, the pyramid is going up and down all the time. Well, we keep trying to, you know, run as lean as we can. But at a certain point, we would have to start cutting services to, if we, you know, and, and I realize that you might sometimes advocate for that. But, yeah. yeah. And then uh, just had another question. Mm -hmm. uh, I see some of these, somebody else is leaving the reference library and you've got to close the reference mm -hmm. library. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the other piece is uh, I just wondered a little bit about first aid and, and yeah. who provided that? Science Fire Department. Oh, nice. Good. Good to hear. Because I, I, I didn't see that in there. It's a, you know, it, as I was reading it, it's just like I knew that. Why well, they didn't do it? I knew they had great skills, but I knew yeah, they didn't do it. So no. That was kind of missing from the, the statement there. No, it says master department. Pardon? Okay. You know, I think they got mentioned more than one place, so oh, it maybe doesn't oh, say okay, one yeah, place. So it doesn't say yeah. it on 34. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. says it on 38. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. Yeah. No worries. All right. That was all I, I had. Yeah. So, so where are we at when I'm um, not with staffing? I mean, is, is there a number? I know that it goes up and down. It, it, it Maybe at some point between now and next meeting, we can get a current staffing number of where you're at. Well, I mean, it's a constant moving target. I want to be here and, you and have somebody resign tomorrow. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 but I do track every single coming and going goes into the sport report. Yeah, so, I know. I, I know and you have the orbit chart so you know who is working for each department. So I don't know exactly what else I could give you. I guess it's, I can Just I can tell you how many bodies, but that's not going to be how many hours and it's not going to be who's working which sorts of jobs and I don't know. I guess if if, uh, if there's we'll just use the numbers. So if there's ten part timers, then you can say I have ten part timers, I have five full time and, and that would be a good way to give out the number. Okay. I can do that. Yeah. Thanks. Easy, easy. Yeah. It, I, I, I'm not looking, I don't want to make your life uh, mm -hmm. difficult. I'm not, and I don't want it, you know, for this area and that area. Just, That's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Happy to do that. So I just want to say thank you, Susan. It was a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Very extensive report. I enjoyed reading it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm just so proud of all the wonderful things that are coming here at the library. Thank you. I mean, between the outreach and the in-service that you do amongst yourselves, and 
it's just wonderful the creativity and the programming that's out there. I think it's, it's great. Thank you very much. You did a plus. I really was impressed with the uh, passports and how much it's going. Yeah, and we've, kind of, we've kind of been in the low season for it for a while now, and it's starting to pick up. Yeah, yes. Major. Okay, can I ask a question? I noticed that um, uh, Neil is retiring in November. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid so. Um, big loss. Are, do you do anything? Or, I mean, since he, is it November when he has his veteran? Yeah, and that's like practically his last day. He's oh, arranged it. So his last day is the day after the veteran's history breakfast. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, he does not, he, he looked me right in the eye very sternly. He does not want to party. He says, I don't want my car. <laughs> do not get me anything. Right. I don't want to say right. goodbye. Well, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's in the he, he does so really nice, you know, so, you know, I know just now he'll be a patron. Yeah. Now he'll be coming and going, you knew that. You should have done that. <laughs> yeah, can I ask you a couple things about patron suggestions and comments? Is that part of this section? Mm -hmm. Um, I noticed. Well, that's in the communications. Oh, Sorry. so all right. Um, but we'll okay. We'll move down to the patron suggestions and communications. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. All right. Um, I noticed that they're asking for you to enforce no talking on cell phones, and I guess we have a policy that says there's just. They're not allowed to talk on phones in a certain silent zone. Right. Which is the floor. Oh, so um, so you could be in the library and somebody could be next to you talking on the phone and yeah, totally disrupting you. Well, nobody is supposed to be disturbing somebody else. Everybody is supposed to be very courteous, but you know, in this day and age, like for example, in the computer area. You might have somebody working on a computer, but they're talking to somebody like a customer service person or a right. insurance person or whatever it is that they're doing. And there are all kinds of small conversations. And obviously, the person sitting next to them is, is annoyed by it. But it's just kind of the modern day reality, I feel. So they have to be courteous about it. They can, people can always go up to the desk and complain. And certainly, if somebody's having a loud conversation that's just, you know, for fun, we, they certainly get asked to move to another area, move to a social zone, which is expected to be louder. So we just accept it. We don't think we should revisit that. Personally, when I used to have to come to the library, when my printer wasn't working and I had to work on like huge um, spreadsheets, I mean, I needed to be totally concentrating. Yeah. The guy sitting next to me crinkling his potato chips was driving me nuts. So yeah. I can imagine if someone was talking. But if you need to use a computer and you need to have a conversation with someone, couldn't they just go somewhere else as opposed to bothering the mask? Well, we'll work on that. Yeah, we did just get some, the, the patron laptops that the board approved a few months ago mm -hmm. um, are going to be allowing people to then check the laptop out from the desk and go take it to a quiet study room so that they can concentrate more. And they, they'll be able to connect to the printers. Or, and yeah. honestly, in reality, and I don't know if this is true here too, a lot of people have their earbuds in, and it, it really doesn't distract people, uh, all in all. I say it's a small percentage for my experience. Now, obviously, I'm not in this building all the time, but I'm just saying, being in a library today, a lot of people do have earbuds in. And, well, but you have, do have to keep it at a respectful tone, and that should always be the, you know, you know, that should be the, the, the new one. And then if you're in the kids' department and you're reading to your child and some guy's on the phone, I mean, I don't see how well, it meshes. That is, yeah, that, that would still have to be at a respectful. But why does it have to exist at all? If you want to talk, go somewhere else. I mean, it is a library. I guess I don't even know how much people, other than tax and stuff. I, I think, think people, on the most people, people talk people. about the most <laughs> personal things on their phones. But, I, I, I okay, I just thought I'd bring yeah. it up because it seems like I you know we have a policy. I think it is a library, and we want all these older college kids to come here and study and what have you. And well, the, they, they, they come them. to the silent zone. That's that's right. actually what you do see is so on that's the, the wall. Yeah, yeah that's okay. the studying, really deep studying area is okay. this floor, and it is a silent zone. You are not allowed to use a cell phone up here. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm guessing in time you'll you'll figure out if it's getting better or worse. Yeah. All right, then my other issue was um, their complaints about, I guess, just the climate in the library. 
with the, the teams in particular, yeah. I'm getting a ton of complaints about because yeah. we have this new teen librarian um, and she has this effervescent personality and the kids absolutely love her. So she's getting all of these kids coming into Teen Underground. But Teen Underground's it's getting a, a little great bit, problem. It's a great problem. But, you know, I do feel <laughs> sympathy with the people that are trying to get work done on the other side of the glass outside mm -hmm. Teen Underground. So we do have a number of things that we are getting ready to do. You know, we're having a little problem with like the glass door isn't quite shutting ceiling. properly mm -hmm. and, the, and some of the ceiling on the glass is starting to crack a little. So we have like four separate things okay. that we're going to work on. It's still not going to be perfect. Some people just don't like some. Uh, some of these are just like, why are these teens here? It's like, why are they in the library? <laughs> yeah. It's just like, well, that's <laughs> like, oh, I read some of them. I know. I mean, I'd much yeah. rather have them here than doing other things. Well, I so like, this is awesome problem. <laughs> That's but you guys will have to handle it. Yeah, it's just it. a logistical thing because exactly. you've got computers right outside right. of their room. Yeah, so we just maybe have to read. Okay, okay. Yeah. sounds good. It yeah. sounds like a great problem to have to solve. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, anything from the friends of the library? No, no meeting. Okay. Um, and then legislative or rails? Nope. Okay, thank you. I mean, it's not that rails doesn't have a lot of stuff going on, it's just I don't think you'd be particularly interested. So. Okay, so then we're going to pass time executive session. So, that. okay, so I now need a motion to move into executive session to discuss the use of personnel and equipment to respond to an actual a threatened or a reasonably potential danger to the safety of employees, the public or public property, and to discuss the purchase or lease of real property for the use of the public body. Motion. 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 Everybody in reception. Everyone except Karen. Okay, no Karen. Okay, we will start the and 831. I already took a roll. Everyone's here except Karen. Is there any other? Um, I have two things. One is chapter one. Um, last month at our meeting, um, I was um, beginning to question some options about um, um, using a survey or questionnaire specifically for the Chapter 1 publications that are mailed. And um, um, actually, Trustee Rosansky asked me if I had any suggestions, and then I was interrupted. And Karen said she's going to take a vote. You want to know two things? Do you want four copies or six copies? And I wasn't interested in that question. I'm still concerned about considering a way that we could find out from the 22,500 publications that we mail what they feel about receiving this document and should we maybe switch it to online? Are they more are people more more interested in that? We haven't we haven't even looked into that matter. We had 134 people answer an online questionnaire, which is not a person receiving a, doc, uh, a publication at home. So we're not even addressing this 22-5. And I'd like to um, see if before, you know, I know you plan on increasing it, and you're going to see how it goes, but I thought we should still give some thought to a questionnaire or a survey to the people who receive the publication in the mail. Um, we talked about condos where they throw dozens of them mm -hmm. and supposedly it's illegal or they shouldn't be doing it. You know, maybe we need to reconsider not using that address at all, but in, in a publication in the survey, we should ask people if, you know, we need to, we, we want to know two things. If it's an effective publication coming through the mail, would they prefer the online e-letter or whatever you called it? And then, um, do they come to the library or have they come to the library in the past three months to attend programs? 
We don't know what we're getting out of this. And then maybe on the bottom we should say, if you do not respond, this, make this paper publication will be eliminated and you can visit our e-letter on whatever and see if that will get them to respond to you. Right now you're spending $25,000 a year. All we've heard about our programs is how small the majority of the attendees are. We need to do something before we increase it and we don't even have an idea of what's going on. So why not put a survey or a questionnaire in the next publication that maybe could be dropped in the mailbox with no postage or dropped off at the library and get some responses. You haven't gotten any responses from the mailing, but yet we've decided it's a great idea, let's continue. So I kind of feel like we really don't know that. So that was my so, suggestion. I, I guess, I, I, what number is, is enough? 22,500, at least on one so of you them. You want 22,500 people to reply. You have not asked one no, of them to. I'm just saying, what's the number that's enough that would be like Not enough? 134. So. Well, even if you did put it out there and say, you know, in a nice way, please, it's very important it's for us to, mm -hmm. to, to determine how we're doing this. Could you please either drop this in the mail or drop it at, and have a box or something mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. library? I think that's fine. I think we should do something. Well, well, we have to remember that they can't just drop it in the mail. We, we would be paying that post. Well, well, no, that's not true. You can, you can you can find out from the post office, there's like things that you can have sent back, which would be probably just as inexpensive as sending this publication out in postage, or less. Well, then be a tear off or a be, fold over, yeah. That needs so to be investigated then. The mm -hmm. post office wouldn't charge us for that? Well, if they do, it would be as cheap as it is, what is it, seven cents, I think you told me? Well, yeah, but if all 22,000. Mm -hmm. Well, statistically, oh. on surveys, only a certain yeah. percentage. Right. Yeah. right. I mean, response. if you recall, the village did their so big survey, true. and they only got a couple hundred responses. We got more replies on our library survey than they got on theirs, and they really On the website? Uh, uh, the one that the, 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 the strategic plan that Bowling and Associates did, that, that got more responses than the village got. So, But it still was like 300. I mean, we're not... Realistically, going to get a huge response out of it. Okay, okay. Well, what are we doing with this publication? We haven't made any arrangements. We we have. I mean, we you guys gave us direction mm -hmm. last month, and we were told that we have a trial period of one, of one year to try doing it with six issues instead of four, and mm -hmm. then we can and then look at it again. So, but you know that won't start until we actually start the the two extra okay. issues. So. And then again, again, the vote was my my. The what vote was <laughs> that the majority of the people voted for it. Yeah. So, and your point is? Well, it's because it's not yeah. listed in the minutes that way. It's unfortunate, but it doesn't. It wasn't it. a vote. It was it a straw vote. vote. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a straw vote. And she cut me off. Still, still Again, you wonder why I bring this up the next month later, because this is what I was going to bring up. But she but decided that the vote was four to six, I said, or six. I said, that's not my question. Okay. But it still went through. Okay. Okay, but the point is, so we're going to send, we're still going to continue mailing 22 yes. Why? We've may got I, them sitting in condo so building. You may, I make a suggestion and see if how mm -hmm. it sounds logistically. Mm -hmm. What? Yes, I want it, but that's not the point. No, I said my, he, to him, you're making us. My suggestion is. If she's concerned, or they are concerned, because apparently there's two of them who are concerned, that we are not getting the people we're showing up for us. We're, we're, we're done. We're done. You're done? You're done. Done. Is the, the board did a straw poll. They already told them to go ahead, and we're just going bad. I know. That's, that's, that's not the that's point. Not the point. All right. Her point is she wants to see if the amount that are going out in the mail if we're getting butts in the library. Right. So my suggestion that I was going to make, straw poll or not, is if we are doing 
these different workshops and things, or like the author, ask people to, and actually note how they found out about it. I was going to actually say the same thing. We did that, though. I mean, that was one of the things that recorded back okay, perfect. Yeah, I know, I remember him saying it, but yeah, if we continue sure doing this, one, will that make a difference it. for you? Well, my concern is we're mailing 22,500. How many are, are just being tossed out? Do you have a proposal that you make? The there, well, you're never going to have 100% that's ever going to be. But, okay. but the thing is, right. is, as long as we're still getting people and people are looking at it and people still want it, where are you going to, there's going to be a gray area somewhere. It, nothing is a perfect, it's, it's, nothing's ever going to be perfect, 100% perfect. Okay. I mean, that's just reality. The only thing I, I was proposing but, was to put something in the next mm -hmm. publication, getting them to fill out a survey. I mean, you couldn't afford a, a, a little section. We need, to, we need to figure out what that cost is going to cost. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So that's one of the others. What's the other other? So, so is that something that, that Carol has to do? Is that something that the library can help with? Uh, as far as to, to find out how much it would cost to have people be able to mail things right. back to us without them being charged, we could right. find that out. Yeah, sure. Right. Like in no and that could be great. And that way it gives us, you know, some, 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 to, some, some information, information to help us make the decision. You know, right, whether or not we do that. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Okay, then my other question was I, I heard about. Paid time employee reimbursements. I know Greg talked about that some time ago, and he's planning on implementing it. And it's because it's a very time-consuming process. And if I understand this correctly, it would be every time somebody buys something and needs to be reimbursed, it'll go on their paycheck. Is that correct? All right. Um, what I noticed is... Um, we purchase, everybody and anybody purchases something, however, they go to the store, they use the Visa card. It's sort of like, it, it's, it's sort of mushroomed, almost out of control. And I, I don't understand why now we have to entertain utilizing Paycom to reimburse this, when in fact what we should be doing automatically is have all the purchasing done through your purchasing system. People shouldn't be running out constantly, shopping and buying things. You never plan in advance. It's mileage purchase. reimbursements. It's, uh, it, it's reimbursements for health things. I mean, there, there's a number of different things people are being How many items for. are we talking about here? I heard Greg said it's quite time consuming. You have 100 employees. Right, but they're not all running out buying things for the library. But that's a very small Oh my gosh. No, and sometimes it's mileage. Like if they've gone to a CCS meeting, they're getting reimbursed for their mileage. That okay. will just be attached to their paycheck so, instead of somebody having to do a separate check. For so that. we're talking about mileage and um, their health reimbursements. Aren't they already getting that somehow? Aren't health reimbursements already handled? Yeah, that, I, I may be misspeaking on that piece of it, but there are, you know. I can't even remember. It's like uh, their reimbursements for travel, say. If they've gone out of town and they're getting reimbursed for their hotel expense, that would be another example. Um, you know, the, the, Diane does almost all of the ordering. She just got back from vacation and spends loaded. Yeah, she had a ton of orders that she the went through. So we do of... try to, you know, uh, the calendars for next year, say. People give her a supply request. And she does the ordering for the library. It's not everybody running out to, you know. Well, I'm just looking at the check register. Yeah. And seeing all the checks that are going to individuals, or even the visa bill. I mean, right. what? How is that? What's going to happen with visa? Well, the visa is controlled by somebody who needs the visa card. Has to fill out a form that has to be signed by their supervisor, so that we have control over who's getting the visa card, and then. Um, and they're not being reimbursed for that, obviously, because it's still on the visa. So that would still continue. So all those employee yeah. purchases would still continue. Sure. I mean, like that. Card. Some of the time, that's like rich ordering the things that you guys have approved for purchase. So. Well, I think I yeah. honestly, I've never seen a key card used so often as this year. Okay. But I'm just saying, talking about all these transactions and how much work it is. Um, usually, there's a different process up front, where most of this purchasing is done. Just 
basically by programs or by events and instead of every month I mean we do go through a heck of a lot of transactions so I was trying to figure out how many could there possibly be for reimbursements here so now you're going is it what percentage of all these transactions will be eliminated because they'll go through PACOM or are you still involved in this process anyway it's just putting the money under paycheck which will change is that what you're saving I think it's basically just instead of filling out the, a piece of paper saying I spent this here, they will be entering it online. And then instead of getting a separate check generated for that, it will be added onto their picture. Mm -hmm. Is there a cost to pay time to do this? <coughs> yes. What, how do they charge you? Uh, I think it's about $100 a payroll. $100 per payroll? Per person or just per period? For Okay, well that's what I was trying to find out. Okie doke, thank you. All right, that's my last question. All right, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Patty? Second. Second. Do they please take a roll? Carolyn? Yes. 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 Yes.